This video will demonstrate how to perform post-run analysis of the CDC flu SC2 multiplex assay on an Applied Biosystems 7500 Fast DX real-time instrument. Once the flu SC2 multiplex assay run has completed, select the Results tab found in the upper left corner of the software. In the Results tab, select the Amplification Plot tab to view the raw data. If the data is currently in linear view, update to log view by right-clicking within the amplification plot. This will bring up a graph settings control box. For the y-axis, if linear is currently selected, select log and then click apply to switch to log view. To analyze the data, start by highlighting all the sample wells from the run. To do this, Click on the upper left box of the sample wells. All of the amplification curves will appear on the graph. On the right side of the window, ensure that the data dropdown selection is set to delta RN versus cycle. Set line color to detector color. In the analysis settings box, manual CT and manual baseline should both be selected. And under manual baseline, Set the start cycle to 3 and the end cycle to 15. To analyze the flu SC2 multiplex data accurately, thresholds must be set by assay. If a single threshold is set for all four assays, data analysis may be impacted, leading to incorrect data interpretation. For example, if we set one threshold across all four targets in this file, and then look at the individual target data, we see that the threshold line is set too high for the RNAs P signal. To set thresholds by assay, select the first assay, Influenza A, from the detector drop-down menu on the right. When you do that, the amplification plot will only show the amplification curves for the Influenza A detector. Click and drag the red threshold line until it lies within the exponential phase of the fluorescence curves and above any background signal. Click the Analyze button in the lower right-hand corner of the window, and the red threshold line will turn green, indicating the data has been analyzed. To analyze the Influenza B assay, select the INF B detector in the drop-down menu and, just like the Influenza A assay, click and drag the red threshold line until it lies within the exponential phase of the fluorescence curves and above any background signal. Then, click the Analyze button. Continue this process for the SARS-CoV-2 assay by selecting the SC2 detector in the drop-down menu, adjusting the threshold line, and clicking Analyze. Finally, select the RNAs P detector in the drop-down menu, adjust the threshold line as before, and click Analyze. At this point, all four targets of the flu SC2 multiplex will have independent thresholds set. Once these thresholds are set, select the Report tab above the graph to display the CT values. To filter the report by sample name, click on Sample Name at the top of the table. To filter the report by detector, click on Detector at the top of the table. Be sure to save the data file with the newly analyzed data by clicking on File, and then Save. Once thresholds have been set, it is time to interpret the data from the flu SC2 multiplex assay. Begin by reviewing data from the No Template control. This control reaction uses molecular-grade nuclease-free water in the real-time RT-PCR reactions instead of RNA. The no-template control wells should not exhibit fluorescent growth curves that cross the threshold line. If any of the no-template control wells exhibit a growth curve that crosses the threshold line, sample contamination may have occurred. Invalidate the run 
and repeat the assay with strict adherence to the guidelines. If no amplification is seen with the no template control, move on to the analysis of the combined flu SC2 positive control well. Combined flu SC2 positive control consists of RNA from inactivated influenza A virus, influenza B virus, a synthetic SARS-CoV-2 RNA, and nucleic acid extracted from A549 human lung epithelial cells. The combined flu SC2 should be positive for all targets in the flu SC2 multiplex assay, influenza A, influenza B, SARS-CoV-2, and RNAs P. If the combined flu SC2 positive control reaction is positive for SARS-CoV-2, but generates negative results for influenza A, influenza B, and or RNAs P, this indicates a possible problem during specimen extraction or a problem with the real-time RT-PCR reaction and the results should be considered invalid. Repeat extraction and testing of any clinical specimens that had been extracted alongside the failed combined flu SC2PC. If the combined flu SC2 positive control reaction is positive for RNAs P, but negative for influenza A, influenza B, and SARS-CoV-2, this can indicate a possible problem with the RT-PCR reaction or the control may have been contaminated with RNAs and the results are invalid. Make a new flu SC2 multiplex master mix and repeat the real-time RT-PCR testing. If the combined flu SC2 positive control reaction is still only positive for RNAs P, repeat extraction and testing of any clinical specimens that had been extracted alongside the failed combined flu SC2 positive control. The Human Specimen Control, or HSC for short, is used as an RNA extraction procedural control to demonstrate successful recovery of nucleic acid, extraction reagent integrity, and as a control for cross-contamination during the extraction process. The HSC control consists of non-infectious cultured A549 human lung epithelial cells. Purified nucleic acid from the HSC control should yield a positive result with the RNAs P primer and probe set, but should have a negative result for the influenza A, influenza B, and SARS-CoV-2 agent-specific markers. If the HSC control generates a negative result for RNAs P, this indicates a potential problem with the extraction process. If the HSC control generates positive results for influenza A, influenza B, or SARS-CoV-2, this may be indicative of possible cross-contamination during extraction or real-time PCR reaction setup. If the no template control reaction is also positive for any of these targets, this strongly suggests cross-contamination occurred in the reaction setup. If the no template control is negative, then cross-contamination likely occurred during extraction. If the HSC control fails to give the expected results, invalidate the run, and repeat extraction and RT-PCR testing for all specimens that had been extracted alongside the failed HSC control. The no template control combined with flu SC2 positive control and HSC control should be evaluated before any patient data is interpreted or recorded. If the controls do not give the expected results, the run should be considered invalid and a retest is necessary. If the no template control, combined flu SC2 positive control, and HSC control have been examined and determined to be valid and acceptable, assessment of clinical specimen test results can proceed. 
The RNA's P target in the flu SC2 multiplex assay serves as an internal control for the assay and is used in conjunction with the data from other targets for the interpretation of an individual specimen. The RNA's P target should be positive, meaning have a CT value of less than 35 for all clinical specimens in the absence of a signal for one of the viral targets. If RNA's P is negative in the presence of a positive result for one of the viral targets, the viral target result should be considered valid. However, if all viral targets generate negative results and RNA's P is also negative, the test is considered invalid. Failure to detect RNA's P in clinical specimens could indicate insufficient nucleic acid extraction from clinical samples, poor specimen quality or loss of specimen integrity, improper assay execution, and or reagent or equipment malfunction. If all viral targets are negative, meaning they all have a CT of greater than or equal to 40, and RNA's P generates a CT of greater than or equal to 35, the results should be considered invalid for the specimen. Repeat the testing of specimen nucleic acid and or re-extract and repeat the real-time RT-PCR assay. If all targets are negative after retest, report the specimen as invalid. Collection of a new specimen and subsequent testing should be considered. When all controls exhibit the expected results and one or more of the viral targets influenza A, influenza B, and or SARS-CoV-2 does cross the threshold line before a CT of 40.00, then, the specimen is considered positive for that virus or viruses. Multiple viruses may be detected in a single specimen. When all controls exhibit the expected results, a specimen is considered negative if the amplification curves for all viral targets, including influenza A, influenza B, and SARS-CoV-2 do not cross the threshold line before a CT of 40, and the RP internal control does cross the threshold line at a CT value less than 35. Laboratories should report their diagnostic results as appropriate and in compliance with their specific reporting system. Optimum specimen types and timing for peak viral levels during infections caused by SARS-CoV-2 have not been determined. Collection of multiple specimens from the same patient may be necessary to detect the virus. The possibility of a false negative result should especially be considered if the patient's recent exposures or clinical presentations suggest that SARS-CoV-2 infection is possible, and diagnostic tests for other causes of illnesses, for example, other respiratory illnesses, are negative. If SARS-CoV-2 infection is still suspected, retesting should be considered in consultation with public health authorities. Please refer to the package insert for the CDC flu SC2 multiplex assay for detailed guidance on assay setup, data analysis, and data interpretation. Thank you for your time and attention.